ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ವ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಾರ್ಶನ ಪಂಚ ದಾರ್ಶನ ಫೈವ್ ವ್ಯೂಸ್ a view means how you look huh from your point of view so the world is going to look different depending on your point of view same world different view and early on we gave the example of the desert uh mirage and in a mirage the sun's rays are refracted by the heat waves in the atmosphere and that causes the illusion of water and of course there is no water but is it real or isn't it well it depends on how you look at it if you look at it thinking oh that's water then you're in illusion <laughs> if you look at it thinking oh that's a mirage that's reality so the mirage is unreal or real depending on how you look at it if you look at it <laughs> from the wrong viewpoint you're illusioned you know like the rope and the snake you can be walking at night or in dim light and you see a rope coiled in the corner and you looks like a snake why because we have memories vasanas past impressions in the mind of snakes and how dangerous they are but let's say i'm the person who coiled that rope and put it in the corner and even if i see it in dim light i know very well that it's just a rope why again because of my vasanas my past impressions my memories So in the same way when we look at this world if we have only vasanas or memories that this world is real then we're in illusion and we get cheated and we suffer but if we look at this world as oh this is just an appearance this is just an illusion huh and from the point of view of brahman i made this illusion then we are not confused then we're not bewildered then we're not afraid and we're not suffering because this is the reality the world is an illusion it's just an appearance huh just like it's not really a snake it's just a rope huh or it's not really a lake in the middle of the desert it's just a mirage happens all the time so <laughs> whether this world bites us <laughs> like the snake or it becomes a tool like a rope just depends on how we look at it so after going through all these different views <laughs> what is the final conclusion well here are the last two verses of the first chapter of guru vachika kovai if you abide in the heart as sat chit i am by which the whole universe exists and shines then this world will also become one with you losing its false frightening dualities he who knows this world appearance to be his own form supreme consciousness experiences the same consciousness even through his five senses so this is the ultimate point of view this is ajatta ajatta means the world was never born it was never really created it doesn't really exist <laughs> it's just an appearance like the uh, image on a movie screen or a computer screen <laughs> the image appears 
and it moves and talks and everything just like a real person. But if, if you actually touch it, it's just an appearance. And of course, as soon as the video or the movie is over, it disappears and that's the end of it. It has no actual impact on you. You're just a watcher. You're just an observer. Or maybe a co-creator. Huh? Maybe you uh, loaded up the video and then sat back with your popcorn. <laughs> so you know very well this is just a video. It's not really whatever the, the movie is showing on the screen. It's just a picture. So the same way with this world. If we reside and abide in the heart, the heart is Brahman. The heart is God. Okay? And I don't mean this physical heart on the left side. I mean the spiritual heart on the right. If you pledge allegiance or make a promise or uh, maybe salute someone who's passed away, you put your hand on your heart, but not this heart, the right heart, the I am. And everybody thinks I am. Everybody, even animals, think I am. I exist. I know I exist. How do I know I exist? I'm conscious. If I wasn't conscious, then none of this would exist for me. So our fundamental state is awareness of awareness. This is Brahman consciousness, self-consciousness, self with a capital S. And that means, aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman. So how do we reach this state? Well, of course, there are many, many instructions on that. But basically, we have to go through these five stages of view. In the beginning, we're like an animal. And then we adopt a sectarian religious belief. And then from there, maybe we develop love of God. And we become bhaktas. And we reach ecstasy and we realize, oh, God is within. <laughs> and then finally, we reach the uh, vivartavada stage and we do the sadhana. We actually go on the path that brings us to the self. And when we reach the self, then we're in the ajatavada. So these two shlokas give the view of the ajata. The ajatavadins look at reality as, oh, this is myself. This is my energy. I created this illusion. And of course, we've been over all the evidence for this. Huh? The world appears in the morning when we wake up. <laughs> Poof, out of nothing. Huh? Maybe we're dreaming something, some, some weird, impossible thing. And then we leave that dream and we enter another dream, one which is far more persistent. And so maybe we think, oh, this is the actual reality. Huh? But then when we go to sleep at the end of the day, again, this world disappears and the world of dreams appears to us again. So was this world really real? Not if it's temporary. Everything impermanent is basically an illusion, a fabrication, like the mind, the ego. Huh? Look at how your concept of self and identity has changed since you were a young child. So that's so impermanent. How can we think that's real? It's just a fabrication that we use to adjust to the changing demands of the body. That's all. So when the body is young and small and full of energy, <laughs> we look at the world in a very different way from when we're mature and we have wisdom and we realize that my days are numbered. So when we look at life from the point of view of Brahman, then we say, oh, well, this is a nice movie. <laughs> this is a nice illusion. Huh? This is a nice 
uh, mirage in the desert. But it is a mirage and it is a desert. That's real. So we can never rely on this material world uh, or any world appearance for our happiness, our well-being, our pleasures. We can never regard it as a real or final conclusion. It will always disappoint us. It will always betray our trust. It's maya. It's illusion. Huh? But as long as we look at it like that, it can't hurt us. It can't affect us. As long as we know it's just a movie, as long as we know it's just a video on the screen, then there's no consequence to it. It's sort of like entertainment. Huh? It's nice to look at. <laughs> it isn't that far out. Yeah. But it's not real. So everything that happens here is just a show. And that's okay. It's our show. And we direct it by how we look at it. So this is the conclusion of the first chapter, the reality of the world. <laughs> A surprise ending, huh? That the world is real if we regard it as an illusion. <laughs> And I hope this inspires you to download the book. Uh, the link is in the video description. And uh, go through the whole thing, all 1,043 shlokas or whatever it is. And you will learn a great deal. Especially you should go through chapter 3, the teaching of Ajatavada. I'm sorry, Vivartavada. Because Vivarta is Ramana Maharshi's teaching, not any other. The very first uh, introduction to this series, we went over verse 83. Huh? So read that and put it in context and see how he develops that thought. That the Ramana Maharshi, or really any great Acharya, is teaching only on the Vivartavada level. Yes, he may dip down to uh, uh, the uh, dualistic plane, uh, just to just to hook you and pull you in. <laughs> but what he's trying to do is to bring you ultimately to Ajatavada. So I'm going to leave off this series for now and begin a new series <laughs> based on our amazing experiences over the last couple of weeks and uh, the insights derived from it. I'm very excited about it. I'm going to be traveling, so there may be a few days in between. But then the next series will take up from our new point of view in the Himalayas. Om Tat Sat, Om Harihi Aum.